You know, additive manufacturing for prototyping and production parts, well, is evolving through multiple technologies. There are a lot of ways to solidify resin. There are a lot of ways to consolidate metal from the melt pool. I'm with Timothy Bell. He's general manager for Beam Machines. Timothy, we're standing in front of a, a scale model, a functional model of a significantly larger machine with some interesting technology. Tell me about it. Sure. So we, uh, we provide what we call directed energy deposition solutions. And in a basic form, we have a laser beam and we blow metallic powder into the laser. The powder converges at the focal point of the laser and creates a melt pool. We lay that melt pool down in a five axis configuration. Uh, to some people, they walk up and see it and they think it's a five axis machining center. It's actually not. It's, it's a purpose built machine specifically for DED. Um, a lot of our customers use the technology for engine repair, gas turbine engine components, um, feature addition. So some components require a lot of milling to make a round part with square flanges mm -hmm. where you could turn the part and just print the flanges on it or maybe a near net shape. A lot of gas turbine engine components start out from very large forgings where they throw away 80% of the material. So we're here, we could just print the actual component with 10% stock added to it. Unique as well with our machines is multiple powder uh, feeders. So you could run five different materials in the same machine. If you were building this part from scratch, you could start at the bottom and build it out of stainless steel and then convert over to Inconel so that maybe the part needed more heat resistance on one side. So again, powder bed has, has matured quickly over the last 10 years. I say quickly in 10 years. Um, I think DED is the next evolution in additive manufacturing. Uh, Timothy, um, in some cases we talk about repair possibilities. Uh, historically, of course, we think of plasma spray, deposition processes, sure. uh, hard chroming, grinding back to size. Yeah. Of course, you're really limited in the kind of, of surface detail that you can repair exactly. in that case. Exactly. Yeah. So if you think of this air labyrinth seal, um, it's, a, it's a shaft seal for a gas turbine engine. Historically, they couldn't even repair these. When they would try to weld them up, they would crack and they would be scrapped. Well, with our technology, we can, we can control the heat so finely that we don't crack them. And some of these can actually be repaired four times before they're thrown away. So that changes the entire MRO. It changes the supply chain. It's a, it changes inventory. It changes everything about our world. And I think that's the big disruption of additive. You know, additive is often called disruptive, but I think it's multifold disruption. And supply chain is the one that's going to feel it the most in the future. Now, and the MRO application, that, that's unique and totally different from, I'm sure, the designers originally intended the machine. Absolutely. The, is it, uh, do you see a future in which you're putting machines into MRO operations strictly for the purpose of rebuild and repair, or would the same machine and the same, the same factory do both tasks? You I think they're going to be segregated. I think you're going to have your repair stations, then you're going to have your new components or feature addition. This actual demo is a scaled down version of our newest machine called the Modulo that's coming out. And the Modulo has actually been designed around the idea of factory in the field. The Modulo fits inside of a shipping container, can fit inside of a truck, but it could also be flown out to an oil rig to do repair on site, or it can be sent to a remote, app, a remote location to, to work on a pipeline or to work on some type of equipment that's in the middle of nowhere. That's the unique thing about taking DED, making an industrial, and then producing the products that customers need. It's roughly 25,000 pounds, 13 feet tall, 12 feet wide. So it's a behemoth, it's a large machine, but it allows people to put large engine casings and rings and forging dies and components like that on to repair or rebuild or make new. Now, and a notable thing about this machine, of course, is it, 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 it operates with a sort of a trunnion, very much like the sort of the AB axes of a five axis uh, exactly milling machine. What it is. And uh, of course, that means that you're not working with a flat horizontal surface like a powder bed machine would. No. Uh, uh, does that give you any advantage in terms of the kind of parts you can make? It gives us several advantages. Number one, with a five axis configuration, you can turn the part and do certain things. I think more importantly of this, though, our machines work off a of traditional G code. So if you have a machinist on your floor, he can convert to this machine in, in a day. He can start running this machine and building parts in a day. You know, we'll provide the parameter sets for the laser power and the powder feed and the feed rates, but it's just programmed like a machining center. Traditional CAD CAM software, traditional G-code, offsets, everything's the same. Large, complex additive part making and multiple metallic materials with repair capability, says Timothy Bell from Beam Machines.